What's going on, Dub Nation? You're watching Warriors Today by Chat Sports, and on today's show, Golden State has revealed their plans for the 2024-25 NBA season. Mike Dunleavy and Steve Kerr have addressed the media ahead of the Warriors heading to Hawaii for training camp for the start of the 2024-25 preseason. It's going to be a wild ride, and the Warriors front office and head coach here, have they've addressed some problems that Golden State has faced ahead of the season that we really need to talk about. But before we do, I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear from Dub Nation. Predict the Golden State Warriors record in the 2024-25 NBA season. I want to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments. Are they a playoff team? Are they not? Let me know what you guys think the Golden State Warriors record will be for this year. So the first thing that Mike Dunleavy and Steve Kerr addressed in this media presser is why there was no big offseason trade. If you guys remember... Golden State was in on some pretty heavy trade rumors at the beginning of this offseason and into July. They missed on two big fish that were being dangled out there, or so we thought. Paul George, remember, he was a pending free agent after he declined his player option for, for this upcoming season, and that took him out of the race, basically, for Golden State. If he were to accept that player option, Golden State and L.A. could have facilitated a trade, but it didn't seem like... Los Angeles was willing to do that. Laurie Markkinen, his name came up in trade rumors. They were contract talks stalling between him and the Utah Jazz. Golden State was looking to jump in the mix, and nothing ever materialized. Didn't look like Danny Ainge was really looking to trade with Golden State at any point during this offseason. And Golden State never really made a realistic trade offer. But it's interesting to why they didn't make these trades when you hear from Anthony Slater of The Athletic, who said that the Golden State has a consensus belief that they are not a title team heading into 24-25. Why, why aren't you making a big swing trade here? Why, why, Mike Dunleavy? Why are we being impatient? Well, he had some thoughts, and he explained himself as to why they didn't make any of these big swing moves. They would have had to give up a couple young assets. Here's what Dunleavy had to say. He said, we're probably as impatient a franchise as you can be right now, given our time horizon and all that. But... There is a line between impatience and undisciplined. I feel good about the discipline that we had this summer and the roster we built and the growth from within that we're going to have. I know everybody is always looking for big headline breaking news and all of that, but I really like this team. Interesting words from Mike Dunleavy there, in my opinion, because what, what do you really like about this team? Do you like that there's no championship ceiling? Do you like that you don't know who your second scoring option is? We'll talk about that later, of course. But what do you really like about this team? That you still have Steph Curry? You, you didn't run him out of town? You, you got him on a, another one-year extension? What do you really like about this team? Because to me, I really like the depth in this team. But, man, all that matters in today's NBA is whether or not you can compete for a championship, especially when you have a guy like Steph Curry at the helm. Now, the silver lining in all this, with the fact that they didn't make any of these trades, is you do still have your young core intact, which, if you want, down the line, if a big name becomes available, can be used as assets. You also still have the draft capital from not making any of these big-time trades. But it's at the end of the day, I, I, I just think you had to go out and make a big-time deal. But Mike Dunleavy also had this to say about the Warriors and their trade possibilities. There's no point in going all-in to be slightly above average. So, Mike Dunleavy, from what he's saying right here, signals to me that he didn't believe that Paul George made this team a title contender. He didn't believe that Laurie Markkinen added to this team, sub subbing out uh, a Brandon Pajemski or Jonathan Kaminga, makes this team a title contender. So, do with that what you will. You can have your own opinion on whether or not the, one of those guys would have moved the needle for Golden State. That's why we have our show here at Chat Sports, because I want to hear from you guys on today's pinned comment. Do you think that Golden State would have been a big-time title contender if they had one of these two cats on the squad? Let me know down in the comments section. This is today's pink comment. YouTube might throw you an ad break right here. Would Golden State have been a true title contender if they went out and got Laurie Markkinen or Paul George? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I'm trying to hear from Dub Nation. Now, another silver lining in all this is that, according to Anthony Slater, Golden State will be aggressive shoppers in season. That's what Mike Dunleavy has signaled to the Golden State media, that if a tr big trade comes along during this year, 
Golden State will be in the mix. And that's great to hear, right? Because we all think and we all know because there's a consensus belief in the Golden State front office that this isn't a title team. We all know it. They know it. They know they need to make a big deal. Here's what Mike Dunleavy had to say on the possibility of a trade. Does that mean we're definitely going to do something? No. As you know, reference to them being in-season aggressive shoppers. We were super aggressive last year around the deadline. Didn't do a whole lot. You've got to have a partner. Making deals in this league can be tough, but the effort and the urgency will always be there. I mean, are, are we really believing Mike Dunleavy in this scenario? Do we really think that he's not just saving face because he hasn't been willing to give up certain assets that you probably need to give up to make a big swing deal in this league? He's kind of holding on to Jonathan Kaminga, Brandon Pajemski potentially too long, and maybe already did, missing out on a Paul George or Laurie Markkinen. Maybe he should have given those guys up. But, hey, who knows? Maybe those guys, maybe Jonathan Kaminga will play himself into being worthy of the biggest piece in a big swing deal that propels this Golden State team to title contention. I don't think so, though, because Golden State has made it very clear that they're looking for those two guys, Brandon Pajemski and Jonathan Kaminga, to be spearheading the next era of Warriors basketball. So... I think a trade for either one of them is unlikely. Next up on what Mike Dunleavy and Steve Kerr had to tell us was, is Andrew Wiggins back? They think he is. But in my opinion, Andrew Wiggins just hasn't been the player that we saw two seasons ago, right? You know, he was basically, you could argue, the second best or second most important player on their championship run. I mean, he was putting up like 20 points a night and guarding Jason Tatum at a level that not many people have done in the postseason. Basically stuck on the guy the entire series, and he locked him up. But since then, Andrew Wiggins has been a shell of himself. And not to harp on poor, th poor timing here or poor things that go on in life, but Andrew Wiggins has been dealing with a ton of personal issues the past couple of years. His father just passed away, unfortunately. And thoughts and prayers to Andrew Wiggins. We've been supporting him the whole way, and we hope that he does have the bounce back year this season on the court. But on the court the past couple of years, he just hasn't been. It it's, it's been a rough go. For Andrew Wiggins. He hasn't been effective on the defensive end of the floor. His shot has fallen off. Look at the efficiencies. They've dropped each of the last two seasons. And come on, like Andrew Wiggins, I know he was considered a low key a bust early on in his career. Then comes along, has a great role playing in Steve Kerr's system. And it's, it's one of those things where, wow, Andrew Wiggins is really making a career out of himself, gets paid a ton of money, and then just falls off immediately after. Although, Steve Kerr and, Andrew, and Mike Dunleavy think this is a big-time bounce-back year for Andrew Wiggins. Here's what Steve Kerr had to say on 22. He looks physically really fit. Speaking with him, he sounds very motivated. He's very much at peace. I think he's in a place where he knows the last couple of years have been tough for a lot of reasons, and I think he's primed to get back to where he was a couple years ago. He's at the age where he's right in his physical prime, and we've seen him do it. He's helped us win a championship. Mike Dunleavy doubled down on Steve Kerr's comments. He's been in the gym all summer. Can, can, just, can just sense a little different vibe from him this time of year. His body looks great. He's been through a lot personally, but as far as the basketball part of it, I think he's in a good spot. We're optimistic. I th He's going to have a great season. And listen, I hope they're right. I hope that Andrew Wiggins has a massive, massive bounce back because, damn it, the Warriors need it. I hope they're right, man. Andrew Wiggins needs to be an elite defender for this Warriors team because they're looking to regain their defensive identity, which is the next key we'll talk about. But Andrew Wiggins, you got to be better. You have to be more efficient. You have to buy in. You have to show a little bit more effort, in my opinion. I know things have been hard, but, man, basketball season's coming up. And it's, it's getting closer than you think. It's less than a month away, my man. You got to be able to show up. And I think Andrew Wiggins is going to do it. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think, though. Will Andrew Wiggins have a bounce back year. I want to hear from Golden State in the comments. If you want Andrew Wiggins to have a bounce back here, give me some 22s in the comments. Shout out to our guy Wiggs. He's been going through a lot. Let's show him some love. Type 22 down below. Like I just kind of prefaced to a little bit ago, regaining their defensive identity. Mike Dunleavy and Steve Kerr made a massive stress on this aspect of Golden State's game. Want to know why? Because Golden State wasn't a good defensive team last season. Defensive rating was middle of the pack, 15th in the NBA, about as mid as you can be defensively overall. Opponents points off turnovers, though. Golden State was turning the ball over, and they couldn't get back in transition. They were 22nd, bottom 10 in the league in that metric. Opponent fast break points, also bottom 10. Like I said, Golden State, Steve Kerr said, we have to get better in transition. We were terrible in that regard last year. 
steals per game. So they couldn't generate turnovers. They were 23rd in that regard, and they couldn't defend the rim at the highest level, 23rd in blocks per game as well. Listen, Golden State, yeah, you had Clay Thompson, CP3, basically players who were great defenders for at, at a point or for long stretches of their careers, but they were old. They showed their age last year. You didn't have a lot of depth uh, defensively in the backcourt off the bench. Gary Payton, the second was hurt. It, it, it was a, a total uh, mess defensively for Golden State last year. But Steve Kerr and Mike Dunleavy have said that this is something that they need to get back to and need to regain an identity of because that's really how they started their championship pedigree. They were a great defensive team on top of being three-point Rainers. Here's what Mike Dunleavy had to say on Golden State's defense. We've got to get back to defending at a high level. We've got to be in the top five, six, seven in the league in defense, at least. That's really been the recipe here all along. You talk about the championship years, certainly back to 2022. I think we were the second in the league in defense. We got, we got off to a good start because we defended. And Steve Kerr, like I mentioned earlier, he said I tr our transition defense fell off the map last year. A huge emphasis in camp will be to shore that up. We do have, I think, better personnel this year to become a better defensive team. Barring injury, Gary Payton's healthy. I think he's one of the most impactful defenders in the league. Interesting quote there from Kerr. Kyle and DeAnthony in particular have been excellent two-way players. Trace is a year older. Draymond remains one of the best defenders in the league. Listen. High praise for Steve Kerr and his in his roster from the defensive end. And I think this could be huge for Golden State early on this season. What do NBA teams do poorly in the start of the year? They defend and show effort. What the Golden State Warriors could get a head start on the rest of the league doing this year is just being in your mouth, punch you in the face, or in your in your grill, punch you, punch you in the mouth defenders. And Get off to a hot start. Defend teams at a super high level to start the season. Pride yourself on defense to start the year. Because for a team that lacks a, lacks a second option scoring-wise, there's going to be nights where shots aren't falling. There's going to be nights where you know, you're not going to be scoring in the 120s. Got to hang your hat on defense if you want to be an elite team in this league. In my opinion, Golden State, if, if, if they have a similar defense to they had last, that they had last year, then you're just going to be destined for another play-in appearance, or you might miss the playoffs altogether. Now, next up, uh, what we learned from Steve Kerr and Mike Dunleavy in the presser, Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. Contract extension time or not. Maybe not before the start of this NBA season. We know that the deadline to start, uh, to extend one of John, or both of Jonathan Kaminga and Brandon, uh, Brandon Pachemski and Moses Moody is October 21st, the day before the start of the 2024-25 NBA season. Is a deal going to get done anytime before then? I'm a little hesitant to believe so. Now, I do think that Kaminga and Moody both deserve contract extensions, but Jonathan Kaminga is looking for a ton of money right now, and Moses Moody, I'm not sure what his contract numbers or what his agency would command because he hasn't really been given a ton of opportunity by Golden State, putting up solid numbers in the time that he is on the floor, but Jonathan Kaminga is being basically tasked with the opportunity to become maybe the second option on this team this year, a guy who they're pretty much pegging in to score 20 points a night regularly for the, this season, Jonathan Kaminga is being asked to do. Last year, he was got up to 16 points a game. It was a nice third-year leap, but this needs to be an all-star level leap from Jonathan Kaminga. Moses Moody needs to be a depth piece off the bench, but is he going to find a ton of time in Steve Kerr's rotation? He was the victim of too many depth pieces last year. I hope he doesn't have that same reality this year when you sign a guy like Anthony Melton and Buddy Heald at his position. Here's what Dunleavy had to say on extensions for either one of Jonathan Kaminga or, Brand, or, or Moses Moody here. Regardless whether we get something done or not, we do want those guys here. Just because you don't get an extension done doesn't mean they're not going to be here for a long time. We will still have their rights in free agency if we can't come to an agreement by the 21st. I think for them, the most important thing is we'll get through these next few weeks with a deal or not a deal. But all that matters is that they have great seasons. Interesting to say that you want them here for a long time because Steve Kerr wasn't Moses Moody the headliner in your Mos in your Laurie Marketing trade package. Why'd you dangle Moses Moody in big time trades all season all, all summer long? If you're like, oh yeah, we want these guys here for a long time. Why do you why did you potentially offer up Jonathan Kaminga in the Paul George deal? Rumors about that were swirling, not sure if they're true, but why would you potentially include him in that deal if you guys want if you want these guys to be here long term? If you want Moses Moody to be here long term, what do you want him to do long term? Sit on the bench? Because that's all he's done during his entire NBA career. The guy's a lottery pick, and he's shown that he can impact winning at a high level. So what's the deal here? Listen, I don't know if Moses Moody is going to be a member of the Golden State Warriors next season. 
I am confident, however, however, that Jonathan Kaminga is going to receive a long-term extension. He wants max money right now. Golden State is still in the realm of five years, 140 went to $155 million. So they're a ways away on a potential contract. But man, I, I, I do think Jonathan Kaminga is going to be a part of this Warriors organization for a long, long time. And good because the guy's a human highlight film. He can get to the rim at a super high level. Need him to be a better shot creator this season off the dribble and sizing up his defender and what have you. But listen, I, I think he's going to be a big time player. Could take that all-star leap. He's been in the gym all summer. We'll see if it pays off. Last thing we learned, and not really learned this because we knew this. There hasn't been a big-time move, and we don't know who the number two option is on this team next to Stephen Curry. We don't know. It, it, it's ridiculous. And Dunleavy admitted, Dunleavy said to the media, we don't know who the number two option is. Do you guys think it's a problem? Don't you guys think that your general manager not knowing who the number two option on your team is? Do you think that's an issue? Mike Dunleavy doesn't seem to think it's an issue. He actually thinks it's a, it's a benefit. It's a positive for Golden State to not have an established pecking order after your number one option, Steph Curry. Here's what he had to say. The positive of that is that a little bit, it's a, a little bit is unknown. And so going out every night, if you're, a, if you're an opponent, you say, who do you have to stop besides Steph Curry? The good news is maybe they don't know either. I don't like where this is going. I think for us, whether it's Wiggs, J.K., or Brandon who can score the ball, I think we have a lot of ways to do it. Some nights, it's going to be different guys, but as I alluded to earlier, I think a little bit with the uncertainty is exciting in the sense of we've got to figure, we've got some things to find out. Listen, I I've pounded the table all summer long. I have been a proprietor of that Golden State needs to find out who is the second option, and they haven't figured it out yet. It, it, it's a damn shame in my opinion, and, and this is something that they're going to need to figure out fast because if Steph Curry goes down, who is the number two? Who becomes the number one if Steph Curry goes down? I mean, we really don't know in my opinion. John Lee Kaminga, is it going to be you? Haven't been able to size up your defender yet. Haven't, haven't been able to shoot jump shots at an efficient rate yet. Brandon Pajemski are coming into year two. They're, also, they're asking him to shoot eight to ten three-pointers a game. W what's the clip he's going to shoot at that? I don't know. I, 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 I have faith he's going to get better, but is he going to be number two level like, of play? I, I don't think so. Is Andrew Wiggins going to come back to where he was two years ago? A lot of uncertainty there. Buddy Heald, is he, or what, are, what are we in, 2017? Buddy Heald is not going to be your number two scoring option, and if he is, you have big, big problems. Oh, man. I, 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 I think there's a lot of uncertainty around this Golden State season coming up, and I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing. What do you guys think? Who will be the Warriors' second leading scorer this season? Let me know down in the comments section. And as always, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We're going to be bringing you Golden State Warriors content all training camp long, all regular season long, and hopefully they give us a good postseason for Steph Curry because, man, he deserves it. YouTube.com slash Warriors TV. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Let's go Dubs.